Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, some more cool stuff from Olight O Knife, the new artisan accelerator, new to me, and I love it. And then, in a tribute to Scab, my summer travel knife purse. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, my favorite comment from this past week. Uh, came to me from 4449 John, and he was uh, commenting on the Thursday Night Knives on self-defense carry. He says, my carry depends on destination. Living in the People's Republic of California, legal choices are limited in many locations. Some locals have laws which are in direct violation of state laws. This pretty much means you can't win. I decline to state any particulars as I like you and your content. So if I told you, uh, well, you know. LOL, shalom. Shalom to you, 4449. John, I love the comment. Um, hopefully someday the People's Republic of California uh, upgrades their knife laws. Uh, who knows? I, I'm sure um, uh, Doug Ritter and knife rights have been trying to chip away. Uh, but that's called preemption. Uh, that whole thing where local laws from one locality to the next, you cross a county line and the knife laws are totally different. Uh, yeah, they're, they're antiquated. They're they're built to screw you, and uh, that's the kind of thing that knife rights has been changing state by state. So support knife rights for sure. And uh, four 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 nine, John, thank you so much for your comment. I appreciate it, and thank you one and all for your comments uh, across the week. They are greatly appreciated. Keep the dialogue going. Uh, all that being said, it's time for a pocket check. Well, as today is a travel day, uh, shortly after recording this, we're taking off uh, for a short while. Um, it's our annual trip. You know, I usually post videos from there. So uh, knife in the front right pocket is the SOCOM Elite by Microtech. This is my uh, vaunted road trip knife. I love this thing. And I've been carrying this uh, every time I get in the car for any sort of uh, extended period of time. It's not a long trip, but I still consider it. A road trip so this is uh in the pocket i carry this as you know i'm sure you've heard this a thousand times at this point but i carry this because uh it's got a glass breaker and it was the first knife i ever had with a glass breaker so uh, it started a tradition i'm somewhat of a traditional guy i'm somewhat of a i don't want to say superstitious guy but i'm a man of habits a creature of habits and so uh, uh i i keep a good thing going and i keep this amazing knife in my pocket every time uh, we get up and go, uh, not on an airplane that is. Okay. So that is the SOCOM elite that is in my front right pocket and, uh, loving that knife. Uh, just a, um, uh, that's one that I keep kind of looking for, uh, other versions of it, not other versions, but <clears throat> I keep my eye on the secondary market. These come and go. And, um, the, the elites are some of my favorites. So I, I definitely want to get my, uh, Get my fill of these. Okay, anyway, in my front left pocket, or or doing the rounds, I should say, is the Venom Jack. This is from Jack Wolf Knives. This was their second release, a take on the um, GEC 47, uh, the Vi known as the Viper, colloquially, I guess. And then this is um, a Warncliffe, you know, uh, what's it called? Oh, a swayback. That's what it is. But the back is not so suede, which I like. This is a... Design enhancement by Ben Belkin. If you ask me, it's an enhancement. Oftentimes, you'll see on this style of uh, knife that handle is much more curved. And I got to say, I just I prefer this less curved um, handle. So beautiful. Uh, I I happy birthday. See that you you always see the little notes I write to myself. It's not my birthday, and now I can't even remember who. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I remember what that is, and I'll tell you in just a second. Uh, so, yeah, I like that this is more of a flat-handled blade instead of having it curve too much, but this is great for pairing and this sort of edge-in kind of action. Uh, but in my case, I just, you know, I can't allow myself to carry 
uh, knives of the same uh, blades of the same type. So I have a Tonto in one pocket. I got a Warren Cliff in another. And then in the waistband, I have a Bowie. Today I'm carrying uh, the Nova One. Uh, I have been rotating around a lot. You know, when I first got the Nova One prototype, I was um, carrying it every day, all the time. And uh, I have since calmed down a little bit on that and allowed myself to enjoy other knives. I've been so into the TKL knives and my new Pinkerton knife and my auxiliary manufacturing knife uh, and my Stroop push dagger uh, that this has been... Um, this has not been carried as much lately. So today in uh, just to have my steadfast partner with me, I'm, I'm besides my wife, I'm <laughs> throwing this in the waistband. Uh, just seems appropriate. I love that little bit of history in my waistband with this Bowie knife. Okay. Happy birthday uh, because today is my daughter Eden's birthday. That's what that is for. <laughs> I wanted to uh, make a comment. Happy birthday, Eden. She's entering her teenage years and it's about to get difficult. Love you, baby. All right. Uh, so in the pocket, lastly, uh, for emotional support was not a knife. Actually, today it was the quill. Uh, this is the Wingard Wearables Quill. I recently did a jute wrap on it with my uh, patented aging technique I use on there, and I love it. You know, I didn't think I wanted to wrap this, and then I went on a little jute kick and was wrapping everything in sight. And this one just seemed to make sense, actually. It, it, it fills the handout a little bit better when you grab it for this kind of hammer fist uh, usage or this sort of... Uh, punch punch dagger usage uh you just it doesn't move around in the hand at all because now it fills out and i just think it looks cool too to me it looks like an ancient fish hook now something out of moana or something all right so that's what i had in my pocket today uh there this is what i do have in my pocket today the socom elite by microtech the uh jack wolf knives venom jack the Nova One designed by me and uh, that blade designed by me and produced, made by hand, by Jack, uh, by um, Hogtooth Knives, that is. And then the Wingard Wearables Quill. Uh, so a bunch of sweet knives on me. What do you have in your uh, pocket today? What do you have in your waistband today? Let me know. I always love to see uh, what you guys are carrying. Sometimes it, it inspires me to get uh, some of the same. So do check, uh, do write it down below. All right. So coming up on July 6th, Thursday Night Knives, you may you may notice it's two days after Independence Day. So in celebration of that event, we will be giving this away on Thursday Night Knives to anyone who comes and enters and puts hashtag knife in the comment section. This is all courtesy of O Knife slash O Light. And um, it's a cool little package. I put together. They sent me these three things and uh, I think they go well together. Um, what are they? First, you have a pocket organizer, EDC organizer here. You got a pocket on this side, pocket here for pens and lighters and stuff. Flip it over. You got the same thing and you have the Velcro so you can put these kind of patches on. I have a, a couple extra I'll pop on here, um, assuming I remember. And then it comes with the I, what is this? The I always forget what this is. The E, the I5, I think it is. Great little light, two-stage light. I got a bunch of them and was tempted to keep this for myself, but this isn't about me. Uh, and so it's got that great clip that I love that you can use as a pocket clip or also put on your hat and have as a forward-facing uh, light, uh, headlamp, that is. And then it comes with this great O-Knife light, or O-Knife. O knife knife called the Rubato 2. And the Rubato 2 has this incredible bar lock action. I'm not sure what they're uh what they're calling their bar lock, but this is fidget all day long bar lock. Um, but also it's got a really nice thin slicey sheep's foot blade, uh 154 cm blade steel coated as you can see, and then the alu aluminum handle is beautifully anodized uh, with old glory there. Uh, just a really nice knife and really great action. Giving this away in honor of Independence Day on July 6th, a couple of days after. So as your hangover 
um, finally abates. You can come join us on Thursday Night Knives and start a new one and put hashtag knife and win this for yourself. So I'm very excited to give this away. I've had this for, um, I think they sent this right after Memorial Day. So I, I, it didn't make sense to give it away until a little bit later. And like I said, I received a couple of extra patches at Blade Show. Excuse me if I sneeze that I'm going to put on here. Uh, shortly. Oh my gosh. Excuse me. Okay. Next. Olight is awesome. And they sent me some other stuff uh, that we're going to check out, but uh, the, I got to do that first giveaway in, in good conscience to really get to this stuff. But let me show you anyway. Uh, great knife. I love this knife. Uh, this is called the freeze. Uh, again, 154 CM blade steel, right? Yeah, 154 cm blade steel, a wonderful Warren Cliff blade. I love that forward angle, uh, just beautiful, reminiscent of the same uh, of the Warren Cliffs we all love, like the Yojimbo and the um, and the Warren Cliff on the on the um, hinderer knives and stuff. Just really nice. So it's about a three and a quarter inch, uh, really excellent action on this knife. Uh, really nice. To see, it will be nice to see uh, whoever gets this anyway. Uh, the the snail trails appear on that blasted aluminum. I love the look of that. Uh, something that I think I will be adopting myself uh, for research purposes, so I can bring information to you, the people, is the Arkfeld light, one that I've been lusting for. For I mean, uh, one that I need to do research on. Um, this one has a green laser, which is uh, really cool. Love that green laser. Uh, it also has a four-stage light, so you can go, boom. You can go from low, medium, high, high, and uh, very cool light. The Arkfeld. I've been talking about this. We've been talking about this on Thursday night knives. I've been very curious due to the form factor. I love that flat, sort of rectangular shape as opposed to the traditional round. So we'll be getting into that. Uh, also, uh, a a uh, hank and this little mini light that that you can plug right into your usb and then it's got it gives you a nice little light it also has a cover that covers over that usb and then you put it on your keychain or something so lots of great stuff from o night o knife i can't this is gonna kill me o light and o knife okay and now they're even saying o hanks for their handkerchief so anything with o in front of it is from that company and it's cool stuff Okay, coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast, we're going to take a look at some Knife Life news. we got some cool stuff uh, to see there. And then after that, we're going to take a look at a really awesome folder that it took me too long to get uh, from Artisan Cutlery. Coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I was very excited to see this uh, first story from We Knife. Uh, they have teamed up with Gus Ciccini, GTC Knives. He's a high-end premium custom folder maker uh, out of Brazil who just makes some really beautiful, uh, crazy-looking knives. Uh, you can remember the Zero Tolerance 0055 based on the Airborne model. Uh, well, this is one that is also uh, based on that model. Uh, loosely they're all kind of loosely based on the airborne model um, and uh, this one has a, a really really cool look uh, to me this is um, a perfect matchup because we knife has just been nailing it on their execution and their design and this is just kind of taking their stuff even further uh, so Gus Ciccini GTC knives he's known for these uh uh, faceted designs with you know many sort of geometric facets to them and they're big beautiful knives on uh, that use an slt mechanism that's a spring-loaded tab 
that hides away on both sides of the knife. That was kind of the USP of the 0055 from ZT. Uh, and, and we're seeing the same thing here. 3.8 inch 20 CV blade. So nice big blade, uh, lots of room to express the artistic lines of this thing. And uh, yeah, very, very happy to see. Uh, there you go. Right there. That is that SLT tab. So you can see you just you pull it out with your finger. It kind of flips the thing around similar to the kick stop, which I think was uh, which came after that this. And it all flips around and then the SLT hides on the other side. Uh, so I'm sure Wii Knife is going to absolutely master uh, this mechanism and that uh, milling for that design. Beautiful stuff. All right, next up, Kershaw Iridium. This is one I keep threatening to buy. Um, threatening meaning probably won't use it very much, but I really want to own it. Seems like a great knife and I want to support Kershaw when they do great stuff and this year uh with their um with their upgraded knives and with the uh with their bar lock uh this this is a uh this is a winner this one to me looks great it's in the right size uh aluminum and d2 but now they have a 20 cv and tie version on their website I think the MSRP was pretty high but they're they're actually selling it for 169 and it's a limited release I'm not sure if they're finished with it yet, uh, but uh, this is definitely one to keep your eye on because it's a limited uh, limited uh, edition. So if you miss the drop, like I probably will, you'll have to look for it on the secondary market. And uh, I love the look of this Iridium knife. And by all accounts, their um, bar lock is really excellent. Um, and I'm, I'm not remembering what their bar lock is called, but it's got... Uh, 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 Dura Lock. That's what they're calling it. The Dura Lock. So got to check this one out. Let me know if you have this and if you like it. Um, and uh, if you're going to try and get it in 20 CV. Next up from Best Tech. Best Tech always OEM and great knives for companies. And then, and then with our amazing in-house uh, designers putting out some really cool stuff. And then thirdly, licensing designs. And this one is coming from Volpex Knives. It's called the VK Void, and it is a beaut. I think this thing is beautiful. Uh, it's a Warncliffe uh, long sort of sheep's foot pointy. What, what are we going to call that? This is more of a Warncliffe, kind of an elongated Warncliffe blade with a straight edge uh, with a point up a little bit. I mean, um, like right down the center line. A very neutral handle. I'm not so sure how the ergonomics would feel uh, for me personally, but I absolutely love how this looks. And um, this is uh, from Volpex, uh, Volpex Designs, Volpex Knives. And um, this it's got 20 CV blade steel and uh, sculpted titanium, 3.39 ounces. And it just hit dealers. Check it out. It's a front flipper. And you also have that hole uh, there for, um, for reverse flicking and all that. <laughs> reverse flicking almost sounds like something that should be on a different podcast. Uh, so check this one out from Best Tech. Love Best Tech, especially their, especially their high-end stuff. It's just beautiful. Next up is a cool one. This is from... A little chunk of history. Uh, this is a sword that was discovered in Germany. Um, I have the name Nerdlingen, Germany. And uh, it is an octagonal hilt <clears throat> bronze sword, 3,000 years old. And the crazy unique thing about this is, is the pristine shape it's in. Now, it was found in a burial site with a man, a woman, and a child. And if you look at pictures of it, the, the bones are just scattered about. Uh, you know, time and tide has sort of ravaged the gravesite. But this sword laying there is the one thing that looks pristine. Look at that hilt. It is gorgeous. Uh, but it's the one thing that looks pristine and orderly in this gravesite. Um, that is, uh, that. Uh, see that? Look at all those bones scattered around. But there's that perfect, beautiful sword. Uh, the, the ornate hilt is uh, an overlay cast blade, apparently overlay cast. And uh, since there are no markings on the blade at, at all, it looks like it received uh, no battle stress. 
So it's assumed that this was used for ceremony and uh, that kind of thing. But I love this. We, we've we shown off a number of ancient sword finds uh, on this show. And this one by far is, it looks like, uh, you know, it's out of the pages of windless uh, cutlery or, or one of those uh, reproduction uh, houses because it just looks perfect. By the way, I love that Celtic hilt. That looks like a Celtic hilt to me. And uh, I think the whole thing is gorgeous. So there you go. 3,000 years old. These uh, these things we make today with super... Uh, that's bronze. You know, the stuff we make today with super steels and titanium. How old, how long do you think that's going to last? Okay, the mechanisms won't, won't last if we're talking uh, folders. But these things are going to last forever that we're carrying in our pockets. If this bronze sword lasts 3,000 years and looks like it was made yesterday. All right, last up, before we uh, dip out of Knife Life News, I just want to remind you that the Ultimate Steel uh, is open and uh, they, they have already shipped the first batch of, um, of uh, the knives that you get when you, uh, the early bird special um, thank you gift knives. Uh, but there are still knives that you can get just for donating. There's the Terminus uh, for $100. Uh, donation for a $400 donation. There's the uh, hamster folder, a knife I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, that's from QSP, it looks like. And then it looks like uh, the others are, uh, you donate a thousand bucks and you got a very special limited edition Damasteel Counter-Strike out the front. That's gone. The cold steel is gone. So you better jump in it. Got to get in it to win it. And uh, this is how we get rid of those awful preemption laws like we heard about from 4449 John up in that comment in the People's Republic of California. Uh, yeah, it might be legal in this township, but go two miles that way and you're a felon. So we want to get rid of that. How do we do that? We support the ultimate steel and knife rights. Okay, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at, I finally get this artisan knife that I've been dying to check out. And uh, then we get to summer knife travel purse in a tribute to scab <clears throat> but first don't if you want to help support the show uh, you can do so by going to patreon that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon or uh you can scan the qr code when it comes up on screen which it does from time to time on the show and that really helps support things oh uh, oh there it is thanks jim so uh, check us out there you can also get exclusive content you can be uh, uh entered to win a knife all of that all right. That being said, check us out on Patreon. Coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we'll check out the state of the collection. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Several months ago when they announced it and released it, I was very excited to hear that Artisan Cutlery, a, a favorite of mine, they, they just keep picking great designs from great designers and they do a lot of cool in-house stuff too, that they teamed up with Mike Snowdy. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy that was a, a big time uh, custom knife maker, kind of in the uh, earlier part of the tactical knife craze and uh, really... Uh, always resonated with his designs, always kind of little, little uh, something artistic about him, something a little dirty about him, something tactical about him. Uh, I always really liked them. So I was excited when they announced the accelerator. And then I was even more excited when it showed up uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I slept on this one for just a minute. Uh, and I'll be 100% honest. The reason I did was because Artisan Cutlery said they were going to send me one. And then they never did. And that's, that's fine. They got, they got, uh, you know, they're not in the business of uh, giving knives away, uh, but they were going to send one for review. And uh, because I, I guess they liked what I did with the with the pyrite video. Uh, but anyway, I ended up getting one myself because I think it's beautiful and I am not 
I am not uh, sad that I bought it. What am I trying to say? I really, really like this knife. It's got a big, nearly four inch harpoon drop point blade. Two things that uh, I'm usually not so excited about drop point or harpoon, but in this case, both beautiful. You've got big belly on that blade, still get the point uh, relatively center line. And, uh, and then you have this gorgeous micarta handle with these grip points here, these swales, perfect for the forefinger and the pinky. And, uh, and then you have this area right here. You can ride up, put your thumb way up on the blade like this. Uh, you can also use this knife very effectively with that forward grip like this. Um, <clears throat> choke back on it, what have you. Uh, it's just a bad ass knife, I think. And, you know, I, I, I don't use that term too much because it's overused. But in this case, it, it really is. It's just a big, uh, but it's not overly big. It fits in the pocket nicely. It carries nicely. It's not too heavy. Uh, how heavy is it, Bob? I don't know. I haven't measured it or haven't weighed it. There is no weight relief in the handle scales, but the handle scales are relatively thin from top to bottom. So it doesn't feel uh, heavy at all. It also doesn't feel blade he heavy. It's nicely balanced. And um, it just arrived. So I have not even used it, honestly. But I, I don't feel like it's going to let me down. AARPM9, Mike Snowdy design. And on the nice uh, sculpted titanium clip there, you can see his, his dollar symbol. That's his logo. Really nice micarta, canvas micarta, green, next to the black blade, looks so handsome. I do dig this knife. So this is from Artisan Cutlery, and like I said, it's just gotten here, and it just keeps getting smoother and smoother. Yes, it's on bearings, and uh, yes, that is a long and heavy blade, so that does help with action, but that just means it's going to break in even quicker. I'm, I'm starting to see my finger... Finger oil start to deposit on that uh, micarta, and I'm getting excited about it. All right, putting this one away, let us get to my knife purse, my summer knife purse. Now, I say this is a tribute to Scab of Choir Boys Cutlery, Choir Boys Outdoor, and uh, love that guy. Scab, got to meet him in person um, at Blade Show, him and Donnie B all day. Two great guys, big dudes who love big knives and just Big personalities, big hearts. And Scab uh, will occasionally talk about uh, in his shorts, or at least uh, occasionally to me, uh, I see him talk about his knife purse. He drives around. He just has a bunch of knives on him. And he's got a job that requires knives. So he uses them. Um, not only does he do those great test videos, but he actually uses them for work, cutting cutting hose and all sorts of stuff. So it's it's cool to see what he has in his knife purse. Well, uh, as as I say this, we're about to head out uh, on a little week-long excursion. And of course, I am bringing a knife purse. In past years, uh, I've brought a bunch of folders um, and, and gone light on the fixed blades. This year, I'm doing the reverse. I'm bringing a bunch of fixed blades and going somewhat light on the folders. Only about eight folders coming with me. It's not that they're of no consequence, uh, but I'm more excited to show you what's in the big knife purse. Now, uh, where we're going, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, woods and, you know, uh, on the West Coast, you'd call them hills. On the East Coast, we call them mountains. They're older mountains than yours. They're just worn down. Okay, West Coast. Uh, and <clears throat> so I'll have a chance to go up in the woods a little bit and, uh, um, you know, carve up some wood, baton some stuff. Uh, chop up some dead trees, stuff like that. And I'm look for, looking forward to doing that uh, with some of these knives. So let's get to it. First one is a knife I always bring on this trip. This is one we do annually. And um, I always bring this ever since I got it, which is three years, because it does double duty. This is the um, Off-Grid Knives Grizzly. Here it is in its awesome Kydex-like sheath. I uh, got the uh, tech lock on the back in case I have to run with it but this is a great outdoor and camp knife but it's also a great kitchen knife the place where we go has a has a wonderful kitchen and a great setup but we always bring our favorite pans and knives with us um the one thing they don't have is a gas stove you're working on electric which is a buzzkill 
but what's worse are the knives. The bigger buzz kill are the knives they give you and the glass cutting board. Um, what's with glass cutting boards? Who ever invented that? Who thought of that idea? A glass cutting board. It's absurd. But anyway, um, this. Uh, so we bring our own cutting board too. Um, and this is what we end up using. This is a great kitchen knife, and I don't end up using it in the kitchen because I have some great kitchen knives in the kitchen. Uh, but when we travel, this will do it. Why do I think this is great? Because it's tall, it's thin, it's flat ground. And then uh, you, you get the ch chopping action here, but then you get the scooping action here. It's such a, a broad blade. You can scoop up your ingredients and uh, have them on the blade. And, you know, uh, th so to me, that, that makes for a great uh, kitchen knife. It's not only tall, thin, and slicey, uh, but it actually acts as a, a palette knife. So you can scrape up a lot of stuff. Uh, so really digging that. Uh, that is the off grid knives grizzly, and uh, that, that is coming with on our trip. Okay, now next, nextly, next up, this is a this might seem like a weird one, but I've been thinking of this ever since I saw this on uh, this was on Legion Tactical, uh, on his site. He got this knife and inspired me to get it, but he took it out and chopped with it and, and did all sorts of. Um, you know, woodcraft stuff with it. And to me, it's a big old tactical knife. So I'm going to bring it, I'm going to try and see how it performs in that sort of uh, in the woods sort of way. This is the sow catcher. I think I called it the hog catcher, uh, but this is the sow catcher from Odin Wolf. And the reason it's strange as an outdoor knife is that it's double-edged. Look at this beautiful uh, uh, double recurve dagger. I really like this thing. It's in D2. It's got a pretty nice and light uh, feel to it. Uh, it's got this injection molded handle, but there is a good bit of rubber in that handle, so it's nice and grippy. Um, and then it also has this knurling and this jimping and these double quillions, uh, which are really comfortable in this sort of um, saber grip. But you can also, if you grip it really hard in like a hammer grip like this, uh, it's very, very comfortable, very secure. And look at that. I have medium-sized hands. You could have massive hands and really grip this thing nicely and have a full four-finger grip. Very sharp on the edges. I do love that it bellies out on both sides. So this would make an excellent slasher as well as thruster. Um, something that I think a lot of daggers don't get right and that's because daggers can primarily be about, about the thrust. And you add belly, you're adding a little bit of resistance, even if that belly is very, very sharp and is cutting through whatever you're doing, whatever you're cutting. Because if you get it caught between hard, hard things uh, and then you try and extract it, that belly can be a problem, especially if it's sharp on the backside. It can bite in on whatever you're pulling it out of there. And uh, that can become a problem. But uh, all of that is 100% theoretical, thank God, <laughs> because uh, I, I'm not using this thing for anything other than taking out into the woods and uh, going to be just seeing how it, how it holds up. So digging this sow catcher. Uh, this one I might be uh, prone to stabbing, uh, doing a lot of stabbing with just to see how it works because it is a point-oriented design. Okay, next up, this just showed up from Shed Knives. Jack Billings of Shed Knives sent this to me. Thank you so much, Jack. This is the Conquest, another beefy knife from Shed. Now, when I say big and beefy, it's not a big profile. It's a big slab of steel that is a thick slab of steel it is a quarter inch of 10 of of uh 154 cm blade steel shallow hollow grind um shallow and and uh short hollow grind very robust very sharp right now uh we'll see how it does once i take out and bang on it now i have the 2023 tanto by shed knives and they they do their models like car models so 
the Tonto has gone through every year. It, it goes through changes. This one is not called the Tonto. The Tonto looks more like a Warncliffe to me. This one is a Tonto. It's called the Conquest. Um, and, uh, oh, like I was saying, every model year, there are little changes, little tweaks. This one is very comfortable. It's got a big handle and that big thumb um, thumb ramp, very nicely jimped, feels just great in hand. Um, the last, the other shed knife that I have, I beat on it and it did great. I, I beat on it, meaning I did a lot of carving and a lot of batoning with it and just kind of messing around in the backyard. Um, I'm sure other people have, have been harder on knives, but that's about as hard as I get on a knife, batoning and, 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 and throwing it. And it did great. So I expect this one will be doing uh, just as well. Uh, but I look forward to trying it out this week because it's brand new and it hasn't seen any time. Uh, I want to see how that tip does. I bet that tip will obliterate whatever I smash it into. Look at how thick and reinforced it is but you can sort of see from this aspect the fact that it is let me see if i can hollow ground <laughs> it won't keep the focus uh so thanks jack uh again this is uh, the green g10 my other one is a green g10 it's an interesting look it, it almost looks like raw g10 that's been colored or painted but uh, nothing comes off when when you sweat uh, holding it so i don't think it's that SK Shed Knives 23. I like that they're dated. All right. I'll be taking that one out, seeing how, how that does. Um, now, I'm saying I'm going to take these the knives out and hard use them in the woods. If that doesn't materialize because I'm just sitting around eating, I'll still show you videos of these. Uh, that is highly likely. Now, I will be going for hikes and stuff, uh, but will I get my camera girl out with me? Uh, unsure. Um, she does turn uh, 13 today. So, all right. Next up is the Kudaman Bowie from Spain. Um, I love this thing. This is going to be in my summer travel purse for sure. Um, this is a another one that I actually got from, uh, got the idea to get from Legion Tactical Scruggs. You should, you should check that channel out. I, I don't know him yet. I have not introduced myself to him, but... Uh, I, I like his videos and he sounds, um, he sounds like he could be an uncle of mine. He sounds like an Italian guy from New Jersey. Um, I'm not sure if he is either of those things, but that's the impression I get. Um, and he features some really cool knives and I do like that. He takes them out and abuses them. I don't want to say abuses them, but he tests them. He pounds them through treated wood. He carves, he does all that kind of stuff so this knife has gone the distance with this crazy molybden molybdenum vanadium steel that all the spanish knife user uh knife makers seem to use now i think kudam is really i think that's what this uh jbk stands for here on the blade i think that's joker um bowie knife dash one i i think uh, you can let me know down below if you know anything about Spanish knives. I don't know much about them, um, but this, I think, is is that. Um, what I mean by that is I think they are uh, companies that work in tandem or work together uh, on, on, on um, the redly stitched leather, um, red stitched leather sheath. I love the leather uh, a lot uh, in, in, in all knives. Uh, I, I tend to uh, like leather, but especially in a Bowie. Give me a Bowie knife, and, uh, and I like to see that. Especially, I like um, when they have, what do you call it? Like um, a little stud that sticks out that you can... Um, slide down in the belt that's cool for tactical use or if you want to pretend that you're a cowboy but for really just walking through the woods and doing stuff having this sort of belt loop really works out best so that is one knife that's coming in my purse uh of my summer knife travel purse that is the kudaman bowie okay 
Let me sheathe this because I don't want to stab or slice myself. Good idea? I think so. All right. Go with, I have a couple, I have a number of them, uh, uh, the big Bowie knives, uh, too heavy. I'm also bringing some other Bowie knives. Um, so I decided to go with this. This is the Boone to one of my fave, Verrits. Uh, this one is um, based on the sort of hunting knife that was popular in the United States in the early part of the 20th century and sort of became the precursor to the K bar knife. Uh, this one is in 3V. It's a beautiful apple seed edge or a convex edge. And you see that nice, um, beautiful fuller in the blade. And the antique stacked leather handle, just looking gorgeous there. Um, yeah, this one I, I could see carrying on the belt and just leaving there for a while. Uh, you know, like an old school camp knife, uh, like a dad from the 1930s uh, at the campsite would be carrying something like this around. And then uh, sadly, it gets used the next generation as a war knife. And then the K bar is invented. So that's that's what this is. That's the sort of lineage of this knife, and uh, that's what I intend to use. Uh, it's one that I intend to use while I'm out there. Seem to be having a little bit of issue with the knife cam today. Not sure what that's all about. Now, while I'm there, I'm gonna have need for a fixed blade knife when I'm just hanging out uh, around the villa or the the place for stay it's a villa and um uh, say i'm in light sh shorts gym shorts or maybe even in my pjs what am i going to have on just in case a bear comes through the window or something else uh, well need to have something like this Arms so far have been somewhat big somewhat heavy and not um not good for non-belt carry well this one is This one with the with the clip and the excellent oh, great in uh, any sort of light pants, any sort of light uh, shorts or anything like that. This is the Spartan Knives Raider Dagger, uh, de designed by Les George Knives and produced by Spartan Blades. This thing is an absolute beauty. It is based on the um, uh, another precursor knife to the K-Bar, the Marine Raider Stiletto. And it was used for, for nothing much more than killing, let's just say, with that uh, stiff double-edged blade. Uh, so stiff sometimes they would break when they fell. And um, we have it on, on good authority that sometimes this knife, as well as the Fairbairn Sykes, uh, they would actually pre-break them and make little sharp chisel tips so that the point didn't you know break off in use uh the very very sharp point can bite into bone and then the the load uh after it all of the uh the pressure load after it could snap the blade but in any case uh spartan blades is taking care of that in the time that the original marine raider dagger was made uh they were inexpensive and 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 uh, not made with very good materials, so we're prone to break. Um, I'm going to bring this over to this main cam here. Uh, prone to break, and that's not the case anymore. This here is made in Taiwan, and I believe this is 1095 blade steel. Really nicely injection molded handle. Uh, you can see you can see all of that jimping all over that handle. Just makes for a great uh, grip in both sort of this flat shovel and then also in this sort of uh, grip. Now, um, the way that these are used in the Fairbairn Sykes were uh, a lot of different ways, but one and pull them into it, which is just efficient, uh, but just sounds horrible and savage. Uh, but that is uh, the kind of thing that hap happens, you know, in, in war and combat. And it's not pretty, but it's reality. And something like this made just for something like that. So this will be my 
pajama knife. Uh, maybe that's too much information. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, no trip would be uh, complete without a tomahawk. And yes, I have a car tomahawk, uh, a Schrad spiked tomahawk in the car. And uh, it was a gift, Father's Day gift years and years ago. But I have to bring a Wingard wearables tomahawk. So I'm going to bring the back ripper. Let me see if this knife cam is cooperating here. The Wingard wearables uh, back ripper tomahawk is, this is their signature tomahawk. This is the first one they came out with. Zach Wingard uh, is, uh, who was just on the show, just announced exclusively on the Knife Junkie podcast uh, that they are releasing a knife soon. And it is cool. A wearable knife a large seven inch blade that fits on your person easily. That's his whole thing, figuring out how to wear tomahawks, how to wear even a pylon spear, uh, different ways you can wear these uh, implements for daily use. This back ripper tomahawk has a uh, 16, is 16 inches overall. It's got this beautiful American hickory handle, stained red and then um, branded with a red hot file. This makes it look good, also gives it a little bit of texture and gription there. Uh, you have a forged 1075, I think it is, uh, head here with a, downly, uh, a severely downward canted uh, inch and a half curved blade, which just bites in due to that angle. The angle it's, it's hung at is just wicked. And it bites in and goes all the way. It's quite deep. Doesn't flare out too much because remember, you still have to pull it out of whatever you put it into. Uh, it's hung here with cross wedges, a uh, very traditional style cross wedge uh, hanging there. And then it's got this uh, black natural epoxy under there. So it's really, that head is really on there and it's not going to slide down the haft. It's not that kind. And then you have a curved flattened spike that's sharp on the bottom. So this is definitely for um, uh, for a fighting. It is for grabbing and for pulling and tearing and ripping and chopping. It is a nasty, nasty bit of kit. But I've also heard that people use this for gardening. People love this for gardening. You have a lot of reach with the 16 inches. You have a sharp uh, inner hook here. You can grab... Uh, vines you can grab i don't know whatever you're pruning and pull it towards you and either cut through it or pull it towards you to reach it you've got this side uh this is a pretty good axe i mean you don't want to use this for chopping wood but you could chop live saplings and stuff like that you know you could you could chop a little bit of dry wood in a pinch it's just not really set up for that so wingard wearables back ripper coming with me and then uh as are the kydex covers uh, for both of those. Uh, those Kydex covers are set up for in the waistband carry of this. Yes, it's true. You really can. Uh, I don't, but uh, some do. And uh, But it, it's also just a great way to carry it around without getting poked or sliced. All right. So next up, I had to bring a Tops. And it was really, it came down to um, the Prather War Bowie or this next one. Now I already have a couple of Bowies in this uh, bag in my knife purse. Anyway, so I should vary it a little bit. So I brought this and it's a, uh, also, a, <laughs> it's also a hog hunting knife, just like the sow catcher, the Odin wolf sow catcher. But this is the tops knives, wild pig hunter. First of all, I have to show it in this sumptuous and beautiful uh, leather sheath. This would be like if I had a Ferrari, I'd love seats made of this leather. Well, maybe I'd want it a little softer, but I love the stitching, the white stitching. So nice. I love when Tops does leather. So much better than the nylon. And the Kydex is good. but uh, So this is the Wild Pig Hunter. Uh, this is based on, I believe, a Russian military knife. And um, I'm going to uh, show you right here. It's got this setup here where if you if you look at it in cross section, it's kind of like an I beam. So it is a super rigid knife set up for a charging um, 
pig. You're hunting a wild pig. That's what they that's what they use these for. They have dogs who grab the pig and hold it down, and then you go up and you you stab it. And uh, you know that's that's gonna be a stressful bit of business. For so you can see here, you can see a hormone. Uh, it is differentially heat treated, so it's harder on the edge here and softer back here and on the spine. So it can absorb some of that shock from the nasty work this is supposed to be doing. Uh, but this also makes just a great uh, knife for non-pigs. Um, Say you have to fight a human. This would be a great thing for that. Uh, but I've also seen it used uh, to great effect in the outdoors. Let's face it, that's what these are going to get used for mostly uh, is outdoor use. And that edge, that really nice uh, grind and the, the perfect kydex or not kydex the perfect micarta handle will make this a pleasure to use out in the campsite you know plus uh something you see here are those double quillions really great for a forward thrust and let's face it this is a thrust oriented knife now you could do a whole lot with that super uh keen edge you know uh carving and that kind of thing but really this is thrust oriented and so those quillions are doing you a big favor all right that is the tops wild pig hunter second to last uh on this trip my brother-in-law comes uh and uh, we always do some bottle cutting and this one will impress him so this is to impress the brother-in-law Yes, I need this camera here because it's so big. This is the Puzan Predator Hunter by Work Tough Gear. Um, I've shown this off a lot. Uh, based on, inspired by the big knife that everyone on the Predator team carried in the movie Predator, uh, though Billy was the guy who really highlights it. He cuts himself. Uh -oh. And in the movie, this back uh, is sharpened from here to here. Uh, but the real inspiration is the shape of the blade and that swedge and that sort of fast, uh, not faceted, but geometric drop down as opposed to the swoop on a regular Bowie. Uh, but this is, isn't just big and ridiculously cool. It's also big and ridiculously useful. This finger guard gives you a nice choil to choke up on. And let me see if I can get this over here. It gives you a nice uh, choil to choke up on that is um, chamfered really, really nicely. So it feels good. It doesn't, it looks like, I mean, I remember when I saw this in pictures, I thought, oh, that's going to be a problem there. But it feels good in hand. And uh, so when you hold it like this and you're doing your up-close carving uh, and, and close-up work, uh, it feels like it's not even between your fingers because it's nice and thin and everything is chamfered and rounded. Of course, it's got this beautiful horse hoof pommel so that uh, when you're chopping, centrifugal force doesn't pull the knife out of your hands. So you got that bird's beak and the extended, I call it a horse hoof. It looks like a horse hoof kind of, that extended bit here so that your palm, so it can bounce off, off of your palm there in a chop. This knife is heavy, um, but I find that uh, <laughs> using weights helps. So, uh, uh, it, it it feels good. The only thing I would change about this is maybe make this section of the handle a little less bulbous. But to a very large hand, uh, I'm sure that's not an issue. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it as is. But this will be uh, some bottle chopping. And uh, if we can find a discreet place to pull this out, because uh, I, I would hate to be out on a trail and find a place that I think is secluded and start chopping with this. And then someone walks by and I'm like, that guy. Um, but that is the Puzan Predator Hunter. I met Mr. Puzan, Dave Puzan, uh, at the at the Work Tough Gear booth. Very nice guy. And I, it was nice to compliment him on that knife. And then the Puzan Bowie, the Wilderness Bowie and all of his other designs were there. And man, they are just awesome. Okay. Lastly, this uh, might not be a surprise to you, but I, you know, I don't go on this kind of trip without this knife. Um, and 
if I really, really, really need a knife in the wilderness, this is probably what I'm going to grab because it is old and tried and true. And it is my Trail Master Bowie. Trail Master Bowie by Cold Steel. This is, um, well, I've had this one a long time. This is probably my oldest Bowie um, in, the, in my collection or the one that I've had the longest. And it has been on the most adventures with me. It's been, uh, it's done the most uh, batoning in the backyard, fire pit. It's done the most hard use of any, any knife that I have, uh, whether it's, um, uh, for a while, I remember it well covered in black, get off. Uh, it's done a whole lot of work around here. So much so that I, the profile is actually uh, a little more slender than your average um, trail master because i've had to resharpen it uh when i was at home uh or I, it's not my home when i was visiting my parents home uh last summer i compared my trail master to my dad's trail master that hasn't seen any action and you can see a notable difference in shape uh just this is thinner uh, i have always maintained that this would make an excellent fighting knife. It's not as flashy or sexy as some other fighting knives, but I think that the way it feels in hand, its balance, its reach, uh, the Crayx handle, the coffin-shaped handle, uh, the, the slenderness of that blade, and then the um, zero ground edge on that swedge and how quickly it moves around. This thing would make a an amazing uh knife fighting bowie also you got a quarter inch on the back so it is it is official this thing is really a bowie and a fighting bowie uh but it's called the trail master and for a reason because this thing is just stellar in the woods and i've always wondered is the recon you know the the smaller version of this the recon bowie i think they call it. how does that how does that do is that as good is that as cool All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on my summer travel purse tribute to Scab. I'm very excited to go away with the family for our neighbor. Some he stays here, and we we don't. He doesn't. He cleans up. Let's just put it that way. But we know he has his friends over sometimes, and that's fine. That's just fine. He watches the animals. It's all good. So we're going to be heading out soon uh, with uh, with knives in hand. So keep your eyes peeled. For uh, out uh, from posts from the outpost of what I'm carrying. Also, uh, be sure to join us on Patreon and check out what we're going to be giving away next month. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying unto you, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast Bye.